Okay, hello everybody. Thank you for joining this session of Supply Chain Leaders webinar series. Um, today we're really excited to be with Warburton's, the UK's biggest baker, talking about applying machine learning to promotional forecasting. So thank you to our speaker today, Russell Barnes, who's Commercial Forecasting Manager for Warburton's. The presentation is due to last around 30 minutes and it's going to be followed by a 15 minute Q&A session. So please don't hesitate to ask your questions throughout the webinar in the Q&A section of your screen, which you'll find at the bottom of the screen in the middle. And now, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Russell to start his presentation. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, Tori. As Tori said, I'm the Commercial Forecasting Manager here at Warburton's and it grants me the pleasure of working closely with FutureMaster. Um, Warburton's and FutureMaster have been working together since around 2013 from the initial launch of the demand planning module followed by the integration of Advanced Promotion Management or APM. As a commercial forecasting team we're always looking for ways to continuously improve whether that be small improvements in efficiency or step changes in forecast accuracy. Working closely with FutureMaster allows us to benefit that allows us the benefit of knowing each of our businesses very closely, what Warburton's may require and what FutureMaster can help with. We have previously worked on a roadmap of potential future developments and this is when machine learning was identified as a potential use to us. So today I'm going to go through the machine learning trial we have been through with FutureMaster, but first I'll give a short introduction into Warburton's discuss briefly what machine learning is in a much simplified way. Um, we will also touch on some of the use cases that machine learning could help with, followed by the journey that we took to get where we are now and the challenges we had to overcome. And finally, the benefits that machine learning provides and the specific benefits we can see from the trial. So who are we? Who are Warburton's? Well, Warburton's is a bakery business that started quite some time ago um, by George Thomas and Ellen Warburton. That was originally a tiny baker's shop in Bolton, England, um, that opened in 1870. Today, Warburton's is still a private family-owned business, actively managed by the fifth generation of Warburton's since 1991, which is Jonathan, Ross and Brett Warburton. We've moved from selling from a small baker's shop to selling more than 2 million units a day. Our focus is on baking the freshest bread, delivering direct to around 18,000 stores each and every day. And it is our national reach and logistics network that allows us to do that. Warburton's is the largest family owned bakery in the UK, employing around 4,500 people around our head office, 11 bakeries and 14 depots across the UK. We have doubled in size in just the last decade and now a 500, 500 million pound a year business. One in four to five bakery products eaten in the, in the UK comes from Warburton's. So that's um, a quick insight into what Warburton's um, do. Um, before I go into the specifics of the trial we have been through with FutureMaster, firstly, we need to understand what machine learning is. I didn't know much about this field before starting this trial. I knew that AI and machine learning were taking off and starting to make strides within businesses, but I didn't understand much more than that. So what exactly is machine learning? Well, it isn't this. It isn't this robot reading books and learning, <laughs> at least not in this traditionally human way anyway. Despite that picture, machine learning does actually involve learning similar to how humans do. Imagine yourself back when you were a toddler, trying to fit the blocks into the right holes. Once you get the block in the correct shaped hole a few times, it sticks. You've recognized that the square block fits in the square hole. Trial and error, essentially. That's an example of how a human can learn, and machines can do that also. Except rather than a few tries, we're talking millions, if not billions, of trial and error scenarios that machine learning can work with. <clears throat> Another way humans learn is by being told, just like when we were at school being told something by the teacher, a basic machine equivalent would be email spam. When we receive emails that we don't need or never asked for, we just click delete or spam that tells Gmail, for example, that we don't need those types of emails. After a few times, it learns that emails with particular words in constitute spam, and we no longer see these in our inbox. 
we have told it just as a teacher would tell us something in school. After millions of examples of the same thing from all Gmail customers around the world, it can learn to understand what is spam and what isn't with a high degree of accuracy. However, a generalized and possibly the simplest explanation is pattern recognition. That's it. Remove all the fancy buzzwords and math and fundamentally machine learning is mostly pattern recognition. It takes data input, which can be thousands to billions of data points, uses learning algorithms to find and understand patterns or relationships, and then provides an output. It sounds simple when generalizing it that way, but the reason why we hear a lot of stories about machine learning and AI is that these pattern, there are patterns in almost everything, hence its use is very broad. We've all heard of many, if not all, of these companies on the screen now, some of the biggest in the world. Even one of our competitors is on there, Hovis. But make no mistake, your competitors, if they haven't already, are probably looking into ways machine learning can help them get ahead of the competition. Look at some of the real world examples that many of us will have heard of or even use ourselves, maybe even without knowing machine learning is involved. Virtual per personal assistants such as Alexa and Google Home. Social media where your feed is driven by machines learning the patterns in your social media behavior. Alongside others such as self-driving cars, medical diagnosis and traffic predictions. Companies are becoming heavily invested in this technology and if the likes of some of the world's biggest companies and even our competitors are, we need to understand what machine learning can do for us as well. <clears throat> okay, so we've moved from what machine learning isn't to basic examples of learning to what it is used in and who is using it. Let's now look at how Warburton's could use machine learning. Keeping in mind that machine learning at its most basic level is mostly pat pattern recognition, there are many things that we could use it for. We could use it to predict when equipment is likely to break down and therefore prevent it from happening in the first place, allowing for better order fulfillment and customer service. Another example is to understand which marketing campaign has the highest chance of success. A lot of money goes into marketing products so any tool that can be used to provide this knowledge is obviously sought after. Predicting demand on promotions, again, to help fulfill orders at critical times for our customers. <clears throat> and also predicting which NPD product is most likely to succeed. Other examples could be time series forecasting or inventory management for packing or ingredients, for example. The list is most likely much longer than I've provided here, and we have only approached one of these when we start to talk about the trial later on in the presentation. Before we go into understanding where machine learning differs from the usual statistical approach, remember what machine learning involves. We feed data into a machine learning engine, which uses algorithms to understand patterns and relationships, and then it provides an output. It doesn't sound too dissimilar to a statistical approach. However, there are some very key differences where machine learning is much more advantageous. As demand planners or forecasting experts, we are obviously used to using old school statistics to predict demand. So let's look at some comparisons. Many of us are used to using forecasting models such as exponential smoothing or linear regression, which are predefined models. Machine learning uses learning algorithm, algorithms that can compute masses amounts of data and, crucially, be adaptable to new data and relationships. Forecast models are somewhat fixed, whereas machine learning, learning algorithms are learning from new data all the time and can change. Statistical models usually only use limited demand factors. Machine learning can use an unlimited amount and do it all at the same time. Our statistical forecasts are based off one set of base data, such as customer orders, for example. <coughs> Machine learning, again, can use limit, limitless data. Not only that, it can decide what data is important as well, something I will come on to shortly. 
we all have our opinions based on experience or gut feel that tells us, for example, <coughs> excuse me, that some products will behave similar to others and can be grouped in the same box. Machine learning can also do this, but it is unbiased in its classifications, utilizing only data to do this. Machine learning is proving to be very effective at taking into account factors that, <coughs> excuse me, that existing methods have no way of tracking or quantifying. This is evident when looking at some of these limitations in the statistical approach. <clears throat> okay, let's pause for a second. We've explained briefly about what machine learning is in general, who and what it is used in. We have also discussed the potential uses within Warburton's. Next, I will move more towards what exactly we have done in partnership with FutureMaster on our machine learning trial. <coughs> Excuse me. Starting from the initial problem to the results and benefits. So we started with an issue. We have a Warburton's forecasting promotions, which is our Achilles heel in terms of forecast accuracy. Promotions account for less than a quarter of our total demand, but they disproportionately account for a higher percentage of our forecast error. They can also hinder our long-term planning to either, to either fill gaps in capacity or ensure our demand falls within it. Our promotional forecast accuracy is failing to improve and it could be any number of reasons, but cert would certainly not helped by the dynamics of the market fluctuating more than ever from changing climate to political reasons such as Brexit or the weakening pound. And we need help to improve our promotional forecast more than ever. Machine learning has been taking big strides throughout the business world and promotions seem like the ideal way we can dip our toe in the water whilst also exploring it as a solution to our promotional accuracy problem. <clears throat> Accessing and organizing the required data was the first step and also by far the most challenging. This might not be the same for everyone, but it is usually a common challenge with many, if not most, machine learning activities. We knew our data wasn't the easiest to collate, but it was the robustness and accuracy as well as the governance of historical data input that proved both alarming and enlightening. <clears throat> So we started with what we had that was the easiest to provide to FutureMaster, the data within FutureMaster itself. On the screen is a simplified example of some of the data that was collected, common to many promotions. We also combined this with FutureMaster data, with data from other sources, such as promotional entry system or historical pricing records, for example. You might be thinking that surely we had prices in FutureMaster uh, or our promotional entry system. And yes, you're right, we did. However, the prices were incorrect. Think about this for a moment. Have you ever had a promotion where you thought it would be a certain price or a certain feature space and it ended up executing as something else? Historically, we were particularly poor at post-promotion corrections or ensuring all our systems contain the correct prices on shelf at any given time. Hence the need to use another source for prices. <clears throat> Finally, we had a data set that had thousands of promotions and their details, and this in machine learning terms is only a small amount. The benefit of machine learning is that it doesn't matter if you have masses of data, it can process it with ease. The overall aim was to try and predict the actual demand, so the number that you see at the end of the chart there. Once we had this data, these details were then exported and provided to Future Master where the magic happens. <coughs> I'm not going to go into the whizzy stuff like learning alg algorithms or data science. Fortunately, that's what f the Future Master team can help us with. Future Master then worked on the data set we provided to train the learning algorithm and produce a model using the process I will now outline, albeit in a simplified manner. What they did first was split the data set into two, one to train the machine learning model, the second to test the accuracy of that model. Using the training set, algorithms then learn any patterns or relationships that exist within this set 
at this stage it has the, it has the answers so we are telling it what the demand was once the training phase is complete a model is created the model can then be applied to data that it doesn't know the answer to which is the second half of the original data set where the answers have been removed Results are then produced that can be compared to what actually happened, allowing us to assess the accuracy of the machine learning model. If the accuracy is not satisfactory, then we go back around the loop and try to understand what can be done to help. There can be a number of iterations of this process prior to testing on new and unseen data. In the initial test, we provided limited data to the machine learning engine, essentially anything we had in APM. This included all promotions we had in the system. After analyzing the first set and reviewing the outputted data, we went back to try and understand where the machine, learn mod machine learning model struggled to provide an accurate number. We realized that we shouldn't be including some of the promotions, for example, promotions over 12 weeks duration, which is not technically a promotion, as it is effectively the normal price if run for that long. Once we did that, we ran the machine learning engine again and produced a more accurate machine learning model. When we tested this on live data, the initial, initial accuracy was 65%. Our internal measure, which is forecast accuracy based on absolute deviation two weeks out, was 72%. Therefore, the machine learning model still had a gap to cross. So we went around the loop again. We analyzed the results and decided that with a little more effort, we could add more data. So we added in-store prices that I spoke about earlier, but due to a combination of historically poor data entry on our side and a data source that only provided prices for some customers meant that pricing data was incomplete. Plugging this into the machine learning engine actually reduced accuracy. Therefore, we spent some time cleaning and improving our pricing data that was used. We also added store count, which provided us with even better accuracy through the training process. As we provided more data to the learning algorithms, the higher the accuracy we achieved, as long as it was clean and accurate. The age-old rule of garbage in, garbage out is still very relevant. So once we had trained the model the first time and then tested it on unseen data, we achieved 65% forecast accuracy at an absolute measure. Adding in clean in-store prices, as well as store count, boosted this up to 75% above our own forecasting efforts. Now, it might not look like a giant leap from our own internal measure, just 3%. However, it is possibly unfair to compare, as there are things that we know as humans that we haven't been able to provide to the machine learning model. One clear example is weather. We don't input weather data into our systems, but they do influence what we would predict a promotion to be. If we know there is a high likelihood of snow, we might increase our demand prediction. Therefore, we have data that the machine learning model doesn't. <coughs> Improving forecast accuracy, although extremely important, is not the only thing we learned through the trials. The other important output was the ranking of the factors that influence the forecast or feature importance. As I mentioned earlier on the statistical approach, we all have our own opinions on what influences demand. Price, feature, time of year. However, even though we think we may not be, we are biased in our opinions. Two salespeople predicting the demand on the same promotion will come up with two different answers because of this. One person may think the time of the year has more of an influence than the price, for example. The benefit of using machine learning is that unlike human decisions that can be based on illogical bias, the influences that machine learning calculates are based on data and therefore more reliable. Machine learning is telling us which factors are important and which aren't based on huge amounts of data rather than the limited capacity that our brains can hold. With the second test, we added in store count and saw a dramatic shift in the influence factors. Store count was way above all other features that machine learning was using. 
in hindsight, in hindsight, it sounds obvious. The more stores your product is stocked in, the more you will sell. However, getting to the data for thousands of promotions was not as easy as it sounds, which is why it wasn't included in the first test. <clears throat> we started with a limited amount of inputs and gained an accuracy improvement of 3%. Just imagine if we had access to many inputs that are believed to impact demand and what could be achieved with it. Secondly, with these additional inputs, machine learning allows you to process more data in order to identify the features that most impact your demand. Therefore, it also provides the advantage of not only telling you what a promotion is likely to achieve, but also moves us closer towards advising how you should promote. For example, understanding if, lo if location in store is more influential than a price cut. Okay, so let's move into what the process looks like once past the model training phase. We have the data and the learning phase of the process we spoke about earlier. Whoever is responsible for entering promotions can continue to do so in the initial phase. These new promotions then feed straight into the machine learning model, instantly calculating the machine learning prediction. The initial implementation might be a side-by-side -side approach with the current process that, that we have to build confidence with stakeholders. This can then be followed by a full integration. The training phase, um, this background process, is not a one-time process, nor is it a daily process. This can be performed regularly, every quarter, for example, to refresh the model and ensure the latest patterns are recognized. Within this retraining phase, those new promotions that we have added into the machine learning module then become historical, providing more data that is more recent and therefore potentially producing a more accurate model. Before we get ahead of ourselves and assume that this is all rosy and accuracy gains are guaranteed, it's not without its challenges. In our experience, there are two main things that are hurdles to jump over. The data itself and communicating this complex technology to stakeholders. As I mentioned earlier, getting to the required data is not always easy. And some of the data we want, we don't actually have, like weather data, for example. Yes, we have some data in FutureMaster, but to get to other data inputs might be more challenging. Keep in mind that the more data, the better, and don't let the amount restrict any thinking. Machine learning can easily handle billions of rows of data. Another important challenge that is equally important is data accuracy. You have to question if the data that is in the system is reliable and anywhere that human interaction is required is likely to have inaccurate or missing data. We found out in the middle of the trial that some promotions within our data set never actually happened you can only find that if you have an open mind and challenge and question the data you have. Machine learning is a concept, complex concept that needs to be understood and communicated simply to stakeholders. If a stakeholder doesn't understand it, it probably won't get much traction. I've had experience with this and struggled previously. Okay, now on to the good bit, benefits. I have briefly mentioned throughout some, throughout some of the advantages, but here is a more concise view of the benefits. I've split these into two sections, general and more specific benefits to us here at Warburton's, but possibly to you also. Next, um, until all, we've got unlimited data, it can find patterns, it's super fast processing. As I said earlier, it's unbiased can identify key influences, and it can expand our own knowledge. Specific to Warburton's, obviously improved forecast accuracy, increased service level to our customers, improved freshness for our products, reducing costs, improved planning, and better decision-making. I want to focus a little more on the next few benefits 
Forecast accuracy is our number one KPI as a commercial forecasting team, but it also provides confidence to many other areas of the business. The feature importance I spoke about earlier is something that could prove very useful and has the potential to provide knowledge that would otherwise be unanswered questions. Forecast bias is particularly important to Warburton's as we almost always over forecast our promotions. With the machine learning trial, we had predictions that were actually under forecast in some instances. And finally, long-term planning. I mentioned earlier that our internal measure was two weeks out from a, from a promotion starting. With machine learning, it can predict with increased accuracy as far out as needed, be it 10 weeks, six months, or a year. This provides greater confidence in strategic planning and managing demand up to capacity as much as possible. So that was our journey in the trial with Future Master and machine learning. I thought I would end on a nice quote that I quite like regarding the field of AI and machine learning. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Russell. That was a great presentation. It's been really interesting to see your insights and have them shared with us today. Um, we've had quite a few questions come through throughout the presentation. We're going to try and respond to as many as possible. We've got a 15 minute um, portion now for questions and answers. So without further ado, let's skip to the questions. So the, the first one is what's the horizon of machine learning? How long in advance can we use it? It can be used as far in advance as, as possible. Um, as I said earlier, with strategic planning, the, the, the longer out you can forecast with higher accuracy is, is something that any business would, would, would take, would snatch um, off you. Uh, in terms of the data that we plug in, we originally used um, three years worth of data. But because of our poor historical um, post-promotion corrections, um, particularly three years ago, we started to understand that that, that information wasn't as useful. So we used a shorter um, horizon of 18 months, which when we ran through the training um, of the machine learning model, um, proved it had better accuracy than if we used three years. The simple reason being is because the data was more inaccurate three years ago. Um, however, when you're taking part in any machine learning activity, the more data that you can use, the better. If you have 10 years worth of data and it's accurate, then that should be used rather than one year. Um, so when you were mining for the data, were you able to retrieve that data by yourself? Was it an easy task to get hold of the information you needed? Um, it was quite hard, actually. Um, I'm fairly data savvy, so it was possibly a little bit easier for me than it might be for some of my colleagues. Um, but I performed the um, extraction of, of the data myself, um, and it was quite difficult, particularly when we may have we, we had to go looking in, in systems that we don't necessarily use ourselves. So communicating with other colleagues within the business to try and get access to that data. Um, it sounds simple, but just accessing accessing the data can be quite difficult. And then working with new systems to to um, get the volume of data that is included. Um, if we were to use Excel, which has a limit of, of, of the roles it can, it can process, we had to look at other systems outside of that um, to be able to process some of the data that we were trying to extract. Again, that needs someone who's data savvy to be able to do that. Ideally, you would use your IT department um, if they have the resource and, and capability to, to do that and work in partnership with those um, colleagues uh, to, to pull that data um, where necessary. So, so what were the main challenges that you had while you were gathering this data? What, what were the hurdles that you had to overcome? Um, as I mentioned, just accessing the data can be quite hard um, if you don't currently have access to a system that has data um, outside of Future Master, um, uh, for an example. Then it can take time to process that access, to be provided with that access if there are potential sensitivities within that data, um, that those are hurdles that you need to jump over. 
but I would say that the, the biggest challenge is, is cleaning the data that you have. Once you've extracted it from the source systems, being able to clean that data is crucial and also very time consuming. Yeah, that's one of the next questions, actually. How long did it take you guys to clean your data in preparation for the machine learning usage? Well, we were doing this alongside our day job. Um, we all have, all have day jobs. Um, and so it does take, it can take a number of weeks to do this, to pull all the data together. Um, I would say that we probably had a limited amount of data that, that some of the businesses may have. Um, but if you were solely focused on it, let's say your IT department were helping you with it, it could take a few days to get that data, to understand what you need, why you need it, um, and then if, if, it, if it could prove useful as well. Um, so yeah, ideally, try and get someone who's very data savvy, um, particularly IT. And, and with that thought in mind, um, have you got data scientists on board here at Warburton's, or data analysts, or are the machine learning forecasts really easily understandable by everybody, or do you need someone sort of dedicated to, to get to the nitty gritty? Um, we, we don't have data scientists here. Um, we have um, data analysts, although they're not called data analysts. You could say that I'm a data analyst, although I am a commercial forecasting manager. I prefer to use the term data savvy. Um, but we don't have a data scientist, um, which is where FutureMaster um, came in, um, they do. And so they can help with a lot of understanding how to clean data or helping us clean the data as well. Um, and understanding uh, the, the, the technology behind it and the learning algorithms that, that are processed behind it, they, the, the, our data scientists at FutureMaster have understand that. Um, I think that's yeah um with a view to having sort of all of this understanding and and specialist people helping you did, did you need this additional training in order to use machine learning to apply it um yes it can be it, it was some sometimes it was simple training so just quickly learning a new system that, that to ex extract data from or um, it could be learning um, SQL to, to be able to pull data from some of the IT systems that we have um, where, our IT sys where our IT guys either um, couldn't do it themselves, didn't have the resource. Um, so yeah, there could, there could be training elements. There might, it might be a case of within your own businesses that, that that might not be the case, but for us in this trial, we did need to up our game in terms of our um, uh, technical skills um, to be able to get to the data, clean the data, and then pass that on to um, the data scientist at FutureMaster. So that, that kind of leads on to another question we've got here, actually. Will you be able to incorporate new data yourself, or will you still need help from FutureMaster when you're bringing in new data? Um, with a live uh, module of, of machine learning, we can add in new data points, but it would require initial training to understand how to do that just as it would take as it did with training to learn to use demand planning or advanced promotion management exactly the same way um but i believe once that's once that's in place it, it, it it's something that we can do ourselves so how is this improvement changing your current promotional forecasting process has the process changed a lot since you've introduced machine learning um, I think the main thing is the understanding uh, within the business that the way we currently forecast promotions is hindered by the data that we have, um, both in the volume of data um, and the different types of data that we currently have to what we can have, as I mentioned earlier, such as weather. I think the business is starting to understand that there are other ways of forecasting our promotions differently to what to what we do now and as i said earlier we we've only finished the trial and that's three percent gain and it feels to me that we've only just touched the surface of it now three percent might be small in some businesses it might be minuscule but three percent in huge global businesses is absolutely massive and can mean millions of pounds in um benefit to to the the bottom line yeah with with that in mind the sort of incremental improvement has there been a challenge in communicating the benefit of a forecast accuracy improvement to other people in your business 
Yes, I think so. I mean, I said earlier, it's quite a complex um, technology to be able to articulate to stakeholders. Most of the stakeholders that we have here at Warburton's wouldn't just take me saying we've increased 3%, let's go the full hog all the way and, and, and invest um, money into something without them first understanding what's behind it. Um, I think that's the crucial thing is being able to articulate it clearly and simply to the stakeholders. We've got stakeholders such as our sales director who now he understands it is is fully on board uh, and understands that we can't just do what we've always done we need to do something differently to to, to boost our forecast accuracy um we've got another question here forecast accuracy has increased to 75 percent, which is okay but not excellent are there plans for further improvement through machine learning absolutely um as i said we we've, we've scratched the surface um is my my belief um but the key thing um, as I mentioned in one of the challenges is data. We've got to get more data. We've got to make sure that it's accurate. Um, and I think if you read anything on machine learning, it always says, and the experts will always say, the more data you have, the better. Um, and I think that's a crucial step um, in understanding what you already have to what you can get at um, in, the, in the short term to then planning to consolidate that data in, in, into one place so that you have it for, in this example, improving machine, uh, improving promotional forecast accuracy. We've got another good one here. Um, as a business with just under 400 SKUs, um, would we benefit from machine learning? I get the impression we won't have enough specific data to make it reliable. Um, well, we don't have 400 SKUs. We have less than that. Um, and we've already found a benefit. Um, I don't think I need to expand on that much more. Um, <laughs> that so, sums it up pretty well. <laughs> yeah, so, I, so we, we may have less data than you. Um, we, we use thousands of promotions, um, but if you have more than that, that is even better. You can even use less than that. Uh, but as I said, the more data you have, the, the better. And we've got less skews, so why not? We've got a question here about um, store counts. How does your commercial team define store count? Is it something that varies a lot from time to time, promotion to promotion? Uh, yes, it can do. Um, and this is, a, this is one of the, another hurdle that we, that we came to where we realized that we weren't recording our data um, in the best way. In terms of store count, the way we recorded it is if a store received a product, that was one, one store and that added to the store count. However, with promotions, we know that what can happen is that, yes, a promotion might exist in every store in a co-op, for example, um, or in Asda or Tesco. Um, the product might exist in every store and it might be on promotion on the shelf. However, it might also be on additional space in store in 400 stores. That element of it, we didn't record. <clears throat> the sales manager knew that that was happening and could therefore adjust the demand in their prediction. But because we didn't specifically record the number of stores that were on feature space, machine learning didn't have that because we couldn't provide it to it. So one of the learnings from this trial for us is that we need to start recording more types of data such as that to be able to um, give machine learning more of a chance to, 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 to increase that accuracy. Are there, are there any other elements that you've got plans to start including as you move further in your machine learning journey? Have you got an idea of where you're going to see accuracy improvement? Yep, um, a couple of them, a couple of examples. Um, one is probably longer term and that's weather, um, just because there are so many elements to it um, that can affect our demand, um, particularly as a bakery business. Um, if, if it snows, our demand goes through the roof. We can't make enough product. Whereas if it's hotter, it's, it's usually uh, in the summer is a, a, a ever so slightly quieter um, period, although still quite a quite high demand. Um, and just there's lots of elements of weather, um, which is why it's probably going to be a longer term. Uh, and of course, there would be a cost to that as well, which we need to which we need to take into account. 
but as humans we understand that it is a crucial demand factor and we should at least explore trying to obtain that data um secondly i think that looking into <clears throat> competitors a little bit more as well um and recording what competitors have done historically such as what price were they on historically um what times they were on promotion and were they on at the same time as us um which you know as humans again we believe that that would be a demand influence but we don't record it um specifically to be able to plug it into the machine learning en engine simply and i think that's something that we um we are going to start looking at um imminently um I've got another question here. Based on the learnings from the machine learning application, are you changing your promotional strategy? Like, are you learning from the effectiveness of certain stores or how, how are you applying those learnings to your strategy moving forward? Yep. I think um, <clears throat> one of the crucial things is um, the benefit of um, feature importance where we can challenge back to the sales managers who are inputting the initial prediction we can challenge back and say, well, should we be doing a promotion um, where the importance of a particular feature is 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 not as relevant as, as as something else? Or it could be that they have a deep cut in the in in their price. Um, whereas when we look at the machine learning element, um, the machine learning importance of that feature, it's quite low on the importance. I think the important thing is that we can use it to change the behavior of others um, and expand others' knowledge, not just ourselves, but other people within the business, expand their knowledge as well. Um, and we've been using it, um, that, expanse, that expanse of knowledge, um, a lot with our sales managers to give them guidance on not just what a promotion would would do in terms of the actual demand that we expect but also to challenge which whether they have feature space on it or not um, whether the price should be lower or we don't need to deep cut price as much things like that is what i would suggest um we've 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 started to do okay i think we've got time for one last question before we close let me just have a look there are a few more trickling in here um are you using a data API to push live data into FutureMaster or is this a manual process that's pushed periodically? Um, the only system that we use, uh, we use two systems to push data into FutureMaster. One is SAP, um, which um, pushes in our customer orders, um, our actual customer orders. And the other is um, our promotional entry system, which is a different system to APM, but it does feed in um, each night um, new promotional data. Um, aside from that, we're not using real-time API connection or anything like that. <clears throat> okay, I can see we're a minute over now, so we better round up. Thank you so much, Russell, for your presentation today. And thank you to all of the attendees who've joined and listened in. And we're really very much interested in having your feedback on the webinar. So please take a couple of moments to fill in the evaluation survey that you'll receive shortly after the webinar finishes. And you'll also receive a recording of this webinar by email this week. So feel free to share it amongst colleagues and any other interested parties that you might have. So thank you again. Thank you, Russell. And thank you to everyone for joining. We wish you a very good day.